All right, uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Doug Martin with the Natural Resource Damage Program, and I'd like to start this meeting for the discussion of the revised restoration plan for the Clark Fork River Aquatic and, Fresh and Riparian Resources. Uh, unless somebody, unless anybody out there knows other people that are joining, um, we'd, we'd like to get started with this. So if you happen to know anybody that's coming, if you could let me know. <clears throat> So uh, to kick off, um, a couple of ground rules that we've been uh, using to, um, and Vicki Watson's just joining. Hello, Vicki, we just got started. Hi. All right, we're just starting with some introduction and some ground rules. Uh, so what we've done for ground rules for our uh, video meetings, uh, we have asked everybody to, to turn off their video uh, to decrease the amount of streaming or uh, some of the issues that occurs with video. And we've also asked everybody to mute themselves until they are um, either going to speak or uh, want to speak. And if you do want to speak, we ask that you use the raise your hand button at the, at the top of the screen or on your screen. Um, and then we will uh, be able to identify you and call you out. Uh, we have uh, Miranda, um, uh, who is helping facilitate this meeting, and, and she can help call uh, folks out or let us know when there's somebody raising their hand. So as far as how the meeting's going to go, we'll do introductions here in a, in a minute. Um, we have a, a video or PowerPoint video that has been put together by uh, GM Environmental, and Tom Parker uh, is with us to um, go through that video. It's actually a, it is actually a, a, a video PowerPoint, so it's already prepared. That's going to play, and at the end of that, uh, we will take um, questions and provide some answers. We do want to note that uh, the questions and answers uh, on this meeting are are not part of the comment period. We are. Uh, requesting everybody to submit written comments uh, to the plan uh, for this comment period. This is not an oral, we're not taking oral comments at this time. Um, there was something else I was going to say, but I forgot right now. But anyways, uh, so yes, from the, the Natural Resource Damage Program, we have uh, Brian Barkoyak, Bo Downing, uh, Catherine Hausrath, Miranda Flug, Jim Ford are all here, um, all part of the, the NRD team that have worked on this plan. And we also have, as I said earlier, Tom Parker with GM Environmental, who um, has helped us put together the restoration plan. Tom also has um, a lot of experience on the part for having worked on um, several phases of the remediation and restoration uh, associated with the remedy and restoration that DEQ and M NRDP have, have completed on the Clark Fork. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bo to introduce the, the restoration plan, unless anybody has any questions about the process that the meeting is going to go through. Um, Doug, this is Miranda. I think you forgot to mention that the meeting is being recorded. That's what I for was trying to remember. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My name uh, is Bo Downing. I'm a restoration project manager for the Natural Resource Damage Program, and I am currently the uh, restoration project manager for the the main stem Clark Fork. Um, and what we uh, are going to be presenting tonight is our uh, 2020 um, update to our 2007 restoration plan. Um, so it's uh, the state of Montana's revised restoration plan for the Clark Fork River uh, Aquatic and Riparian Resources. So what this uh, revised and updated document does is take um, the last 13 years of uh, information and um, new documents and, and things we've learned in the field and uh, 
takes those and, and, and incorporates a lot of that, that knowledge uh, to bring the, uh, the restoration plan up to date uh, as we look to move forward um, into the future with, with restoration and remediation on the main stem of the Clark Fork River. Um, in 2019, we uh, updated uh, or we uh, completed uh, the Clark Fork River Aquatic and Riparian Restoration and Prioritization Analysis, um, which is available on our website. So a lot of what uh, has been updated in this restoration plan um, comes from how we've looked at um, potential restoration actions in the Upper Clark Fork River. Um, on the Clark Fork River main stem and how um, and how we prioritize those and, and how we can use those to um, move forward uh, with restoration of the main stem Clark Fork. And there's no questions, Doug. Do we want to go ahead and turn it over and, and go through the presentation here? Yeah, let's turn it over to Tom and then uh, Miranda can put the video up. <clears throat> Hi everyone, my name is Tom Parker and I'm a restoration ecologist at GM Environmental Consulting, as, as Doug mentioned. I've worked for the state of Montana as a consultant on the Clark Fork River for several years, including Milltown Dam restoration and all of the completed upper Clark Fork phases. I was the primary author of this restoration plan update but what that means is I was the one holding the pen, recording ideas and priorities agreed on by a team of managers from several Montana agencies. I've pre-recorded this presentation to keep it concise and focused. Keep in mind, we're asking for comments on the written plan and the presentation is only a summary of that plan. Some of the slides include a lot of information and I go through them fairly quickly but you can find the same information in the updated restoration plan document if you'd like to dig deeper. So as we go through this, please keep track of questions you have. And as others have noted, we'll try to answer your questions after the presentation. Now I'll turn it over to Miranda who has the controls and can begin the presentation. Miranda, uh, we're not hearing anything. Okay, just a minute. Let me try and start it over. Was that your question, John? No, no I just wanted to uh, uh, ask uh, specifically that this plan, uh, the Upper Clark Fork River Aquatic and Riparian Resource Plan is precisely related to the Clark Fork River restoration uh, project, the, basically the, you know, the 26 million that was settled in 20, 2008 and now is being integrated with the Clark Fork River remedy. Is is that the is that correct? Yes, this is the plan that we're just we're going to talk about tonight. Yes, you are correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start it again. Let me know if the audio is still not working. Uh, 
The purpose of this presentation is to introduce the revised restoration plan for the Clark Fork River Aquatic and Riparian Resources and to request input from members of the public who are interested in sharing their thoughts. In this presentation, we will review some background information about the Upper Clark Fork River, generally describe work completed to date, review the restoration plan goals and objectives, which are unchanged from the 2007 revised plan, describe updated restoration actions and the process we use to identify and rank these, and describe our alternatives analysis and estimated costs. And the current restoration fund balance is noted at the bottom. The Clark Fork River operable unit extends from Warm Springs to Tura above Milltown and is split into three reaches. Remediation and restoration mostly focuses in reach A, although this plan does include potential restoration actions in reaches B and C below Garrison. Remediation focuses on protecting the public. public health and the environment through cleanup actions, while restoration aims to restore, replace, or acquire the equivalent of injured resources. The Clark Fork River operable unit extends from Warm Springs to Tura above Milltown and is split into three reaches. Remediation and restoration mostly focuses in reach A although this plan does include potential restoration actions in reaches B and C below Garrison. Remediation focuses on protecting public health and the environment through cleanup actions, while restoration aims to restore, replace, or acquire the equivalent of injured resources, specifically aquatic and riparian resources along the Clark Fork River. Since 2012, as part of the Clark Fork River cleanup, Remediation has removed contaminated soil based on these criteria. It's been a risk-based approach to identifying a removal boundary using a channel migration zone analysis to identify areas where contaminated sediments would be entrained through natural channel movement over 100 years, and then using a 1,400 parts per million sum of copper, zinc, lead, arsenic, and cadmium threshold to define contaminated soil. Any contaminated soil within the channel migration zone is removed. Outside the channel migration zone, only contaminated soil exceeding two feet in depth has been removed. Where arsenic exceeds the 620 parts per million threshold in surface soils, these areas are also addressed. Some areas are preserved within the zone based on presence of cultural resources, cottonwood stands, or high-quality wetlands. In some cases, additional removals have been done to hydrologically reconnect the floodplain. Here's a conceptual map showing examples of ways these criteria have been applied on the ground. This conceptual floodplain cross-section shows before remediation with contaminated sediments still in place, immediately after remediation with a variety of geomorphic features built into the floodplain, and a future condition where this mosaic of floodplain wetlands and side channels supports a diverse range of plant communities. If you are familiar with Milltown Dam and its restored floodplain, that is an example of a combined remedy and restoration project with a similar design approach. Speaking of combined remedy and restoration, here are some examples of restoration actions completed in the upper Clark Fork River since 2012. Additional tailings removal outside remedy, conservation easements to provide long-term protection of restored floodplains, tributary restoration, and cost sharing to directly support combined remedy and restoration. 
In previously completed phases, these are some of the combined remedy and restoration actions that have been completed. These examples are treatments to enhance the floodplain. Revegetation plans that integrate with grading plans developed by engineers to make sure elevations and hydrology support desired plant communities. And a variety of stream bank treatments laid out according to position along the river and related hydraulic stresses. Each of these include vegetation as part of the design. Here's a map showing the current status of remedial work in the upper Clark Fork River. As I mentioned earlier, these restoration goals and objectives are unchanged from the 2007 plan. The first goal focuses on restoring aquatic resources and recognizes that water quality, aquatic habitat itself, and a clean and naturally revegetated floodplain are essential to meeting this goal. The second goal focuses on restoring terrestrial resources, the riparian floodplain zone in this case, and recognizes that restoring complex, diverse native vegetation will result in good habitat and the kind of dynamic stability that characterizes an alluvial gravel bed river like the Clark Fork. The third goal recognizes that we can't clean up 100% of the contamination and then Therefore, habitat restoration and improving both water quality and quantity will be necessary to sustain a resilient riverine ecosystem. The fourth goal is to maximize the benefit to cost ratio of restoration activities by integrating with remediation and by looking beyond the immediate cleanup and restoration actions to plan for long-term protection and management of the resource. The fifth goal recognizes the aesthetic value of the river. As a prior step to developing this revised restoration plan, NRDP worked with Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks to identify updated restoration actions, organize them into priority tiers, and rank them according to a set of criteria. This resulted in a list of restoration actions to include in the revised restoration plan. This list of limiting factors was also developed as part of the prioritization effort. Limiting factors are useful because they help break down the problem of a degraded ecosystem into specific components. The idea being that each of these can be addressed through management or restoration actions, meaning we can do something about these things. In the revised restoration plan, we link these limiting factors to specific restoration plan objectives and actions that can address them. Also, as part of the 2019 prioritization effort, we sorted restoration actions into three tiers. The first tier is, includes actions in the Clark Fork River Operable Unit directly integrated with Remedy. The second tier includes actions in the Clark Fork River Operable Unit not directly related to Remedy. And the third tier includes actions outside of the Clark Fork River Operable Unit but that were previously determined to be important uses of restoration funds. So here is the list of restoration actions, and we'll spend the next while discussing each of these in some detail. I'll point out that the tier three actions in the Blackfoot River watershed are shown at the bottom. Each of these 16 restoration actions was scored according to this list of criteria and then ranked based on the scoring. This list of ranking criteria includes those required as part of the Department of Interior's list for evaluating alternatives related to natural resource damages. And we'll show you how these criteria crosswalk with the Department of Interior criteria later when we describe our alternatives analysis. While the prioritization did result in a ranking of restoration actions, it is important to note that the idea was not to exclude any potential restoration actions from the revised restoration plan. In general, actions that ranked lower focused on a specific aspect of the resource, so they did not check as many boxes. That said, any of these actions could be important and beneficial in the context of a specific potential restoration project. Now we'll go through each of the restoration actions. We recognize that floodplain diversity, including hydrology connection between the river and floodplain, is an important driver of habitat and function. This restoration action looks for opportunities to enhance or add geomorphic features in areas of the floodplain being treated by remedy. These can include wetlands, side channels, oxbows, 
opportunities to get river flows out onto the floodplain more frequently. The other restoration action is adding to remedies revegetation efforts. Here we show additional revegetation overlaid on the previous floodplain diversity enhancement example, including planting more nursery plants using larger sizes, adding diversity to seed mixes, or using intensive revegetation methods such as wetland sod mats. These types of revegetation treatments could be done anywhere within Remedy. This action includes removing contamination beyond what Remedy would remove based on their criteria and thresholds. For example, by removing the additional areas shown here, we would be lowering the floodplain in addition to removing more contamination, thereby increasing the area of hydrologically connected floodplain. Conservation easements would place long-term protections on remediated and restored areas within the floodplain. Recognizing that there are opportunities to manage land to support work completed by remediation and restoration, this restoration action includes things like riparian fencing, long-term weed management, developing management plans, including grazing management, and in general, supporting partnerships that result in good stewardship of restored and remediated lands. This restoration action, restoring stream banks ahead of remediation, is about doing work that would normally be done by remediation sooner than it would be done otherwise. This makes sense from a restoration perspective because of temporal loss of habitat and function and continued acute risks to aquatic habitat if this work is delayed. I'm presenting these restoration actions in the order of how they ranked during the prioritization. While this action has obvious benefits to the resource, it ranked in the middle and not at the top due to potential feasibility and cost concerns. Another restoration action is land acquisition. An example of this is the Clark Fork River Ranch where NRDP purchased phases 10 and 11 and is able to think about future restoration and management completely in the context of this being conservation land. This allows the state to develop remediation and restoration plans with natural river function and habitat as the primary long-term goal. The record of decision does not include removing contamination or other work in the Clark Fork River channel itself. However, in some cases, there may be opportunities to achieve a more efficient cleanup and improve aquatic habitat by realigning the river channel. This example is in phase seven near Racetrack, where restoration has already developed a design to relocate the Clark Fork River into its historic alignment. Here, most of the contaminated sediments are around the current alignment, so relocating the river will make remediation's job easier because they won't need to work around the channel. This restoration action would restore floodplain features outside the remedial boundary. For example, this action might be pursued if there are degraded floodplains or wetlands in areas next to the remedial project. This restoration action recognizes that there are many restoration opportunities in reaches B and C between Garrison and Tura. Opportunities include removing riprap and berms, limiting river movement and floodplain connection, riparian and stream bank revegetation, and fencing to protect riparian vegetation. Removing high-risk contaminated sediments ahead of remediation would be justified similarly to restoring stream banks ahead of remediation. As has been in the news recently, there are slickens in direct contact with the river that pose acute risks to aquatic habitat due to erosion and avulsion. This action could include planting, seeding, and protecting vegetation outside of remedy to expand and enhance riparian vegetation. In some cases, eroding non-vegetated stream banks are clean, so Remedy does no work there. There are several examples of this in the completed phase six. In these cases, restoration could go in and implement bank treatments such as soil lifts or brush banks that emphasize bank vegetation. Within Reach A, there are opportunities to enhance aquatic habitat by adding wood in the channel, adding habitat features to backwater habitat, or constructing features that maintain pools or overhanging bank habitat. And the final restoration action would be to modify diversion structures with fish screens to allow passage, possibly removing or replacing these structures. 
We organized the alternatives analysis by the priority tiers from the prioritization. Alternative one is no action in the Clark fork. Alternative two would be to only pursue restoration actions that directly overlap with remedy, which is the tier one actions. And alternative three would be to pursue actions that both support remedy and that are independent of remedy. Note that we did not include Blackfoot actions, the tier three actions, because those funds have already been allocated based on the 2007 restoration plan revision. This shows in green which restoration actions are included as part of each alternative. To complete the analysis, we used ranking and scoring categories from the prioritization completed in 2019. We crosswalked these categories with evaluation criteria from 43 CFR 1182. For each alternative, we assigned a simple minus, meaning it does not address the evaluation factor, a single plus, meaning it meets the evaluation factor, or a double plus, meaning that it better or best meets the evaluation factor. Here's what the analysis looks like. You can see that no action did receive double pluses in some cases. For example, no action is certainly feasible, would have lower cost, and would not require further investigation beyond what remediation will require. Overall, alternative three, the action that directly supports remedy and actions not directly supporting remedy, best meets the most evaluation factors, mainly because it would potentially restore more of the resource and result in a more comprehensive cleanup and restoration. Based on this, alternative three is NRDP's selected alternative. Looking at costs, we evaluated restoration actions as cost ranges. Costs were actually calculated using data we have in GIS and some assumptions developed during the prioritization process. However, because there are also many unknowns, it made the most sense to report costs as broad ranges, as we show here. Summing these cost ranges for restoration actions results in broad ranges for each alternative. The no action cost reflects money that has already been spent in the Blackfoot, which is the tier three actions. Next steps for implementing the restoration plan, once it has been finalized, include filling some data gaps. For example, NRDP is currently sampling contamination depths throughout all remaining phases in Reach A, so we'd better know how much contamination remains in the floodplain. NRDP is also developing a Reach A scale hydraulic model that will support future designs and provide consistent information about target floodplain and riverbank elevations during remedial and restoration designs. We are identifying and evaluating unique habitats such as peatlands and remaining cottonwood stands to help identify areas that should be preserved as part of work in future phases. As far as implementing the restoration actions, steps include identifying and evaluating potential restoration projects, getting those designed and under contract, completing environmental compliance when restoration work does not fall under the CERCLA umbrella, implementing the projects and following up with monitoring and adaptive management. And one immediate next step for all of you will be to provide any comments you have to NRDP via Doug Martin at the email shown here. So that is the uh, end of the presentation. Thank you, Tom. I'm sorry for that one little interruption. Um, at, at this time, uh, we will take questions from folks who have who are attending. And, and as I said, if you would please um, raise your hand uh, and we can unmute you and, and let you state your question. We would ask you, since we are recording this, to state your name as well uh, once we unmute you before you uh, ask your question. So with that, um, are there any questions? Doug, Vicki has her hand raised. Okay, uh, Vicki, go ahead, thank you. 
Hi, this is Vicki Watson from the University of Montana, and I just wondered if we could get a copy of the PowerPoint slideshow. It went by pretty fast, but it is a very nice summary of the uh, plan. Yes, Vicki, we, uh, we will post that on our uh, website and send everybody a notice of that. Uh, well, if, if by that you mean just listening to the um the recorded video again it'll it'll still go by too fast so i wondered about just getting a copy of the powerpoint so i could go through it at my own speed sure we can we can do that for you thanks and i i believe that for those of you who just want to go to the website and look at it um, the way I looked at it earlier today, it's in a PowerPoint. And if you just look at it in the current view or the slide view, um, you can go through it much slower. So we, we will get you the appropriate uh, file that you can look at it as quickly or slowly as you want. And I see that John has his hand raised. Uh, I, I was, my question has to do with the dis distinction between this plan and the original plan. It's kind of classified as an update. Um, perhaps I was too uh, dense at the beginning of the presentation, but what's the best, um, is this a sort of a, 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 a substantial rewrite of the first plan or is there a side-by-side -side that you know shows the, the different um, updates from the first plan could, could you just tell me what to kind of key in on uh in that regard well john i guess i would i would say that this is a uh, a revision to the 2012 plan and that it was revised to integrate and um better deal with or, or work with the the current implementation of the record of decision that is ongoing because post 2008 um, DEQ did issue an ESD to change some of the rod that EPA approved. So some of the, the rod was changed and the attorneys for NRD did um, request and, and suggest that we update the 2007 restoration plan to be in better compliance with what was being implemented on the ground or what is being implemented on the ground um, today. So that is the, the biggest thing. We did not go back into the um, 2007 plan that you know talks a lot about the injury to the Clark Fork River. This plan does not do that. It references that. So that's why we are calling it a revision because it is just dealing with the alternatives and a lot of the actions that are being proposed are some of those actions that are in the 2007 plan, some are not. Um, for instance, the 2007 plan talked about some tributary work and we're not doing or not proposing a lot of tributary work in this revision. Uh, Doug Casey has his hand raised. Okay, Casey, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, this is Casey Hackathorn, Trot Unlimited. Uh, thanks for the presentation. That was great info. Um, my question is on the scoring um, of the actions. Is the is the plus and plus plus uh, the extent of the of the ranking criteria essentially, or is is there some more resolution somewhere else, or is that that Pretty much it. Brian, do you want to answer that? Is that why you raised your hand? Yes, unless you would like to, Doug. Nope, go ahead. Um, so there's a separate document, Casey, a Clark Fork River Aquatic Riparian Resource Actions and Prioritization Analysis. And that will walk you through how the individual actions ranked and give you the the backup for the scoring that you saw in the in the chart that Tom showed. 
And that document is on our website. I just added a link in the comments. OK, thank you. Um, Doug, Alex is next. OK, Alex. Hey, Doug, I think this is a question mostly for you. Um, so we're just kind of interested. Oh, sorry, Alex Leon uh, with the Clark Fork Coalition. Um, we're kind of interested in wondering how influential those um, rankings will be when it comes to the, the disbursement of funds in the future. For example, we saw that Habitat and Reach B and C ranked higher than in-stream Habitat and Reach A. And we're thinking like, you know, it seems like obviously you're going to be working on Reach A going forward for the next five to 10 years. It would be much, make much more sense to kind of work on Habitat then. So I guess I'm just wondering, you know, are you going to finish all the number one rankings first before you get down to the bottom of the list or how will you guys prioritize um, actually funding some of these actions? Uh, that's a good question, Alex. Um, so one of the one of the focuses of the the restoration dollars and the restoration funds that are currently available is to integrate as much as possible with the DEQ remedial funds to ensure that the state has the available funding to remove the contamination from the stream banks and the floodplain within Reach A. That is a priority and that it was also um, known at the time of settlement. So the priority for the restoration funds <clears throat> is to, to focus on, on Reach A. The, the scoring that occurred in the prioritization document, uh, and you are correct, Alex, the, the Reach B and C habitat scored slightly higher, a half a point higher than, than the Reach A habitat. And if you, when you look at that document, there are some um, of the criteria that, that we used when we were scoring. For instance, one of those criteria is the risk, the risk that a restoration action would take uh, or cause to a remedial action. Um, since no remedy is, is occurring in reaches B and C, um, that's the, that cri the, the action that was aquatic habitat within reach in that reach actually scored higher than a, aquatic habitat within reach A because that would have a potential impact on the remedy. Um, so if you look at that document, you'll see how things are scored. And, and I do think that an eight to an eight and a half is relative. Um, but I do also want to stress that um, the state does have an emphasis on, uh, and when I say the state, I'm speaking for DEQ, Fish, Wildlife and Parks and NRD, does have an emphasis on focusing the, the restoration dollars to reach A to assist with and implement uh, the removal of the contamination from the stream banks and the floodplain to, to the maximum extent that it can to um, reduce that injury to that aquatic and uh, riparian area. That's the biggest issue we see on the Clark Fork uh, with these NRD dollars. And that's where um, the agencies and our st other stakeholders have um, indicated that we should focus. Is, is, I guess that somewhat answers your question, but I also talked a lot of other things there. Thanks, Doug. That was very helpful. Uh, Doug, Vicki has her hand raised again. OK, Vicki. I thought I heard you say that the earlier versions of the plan had tributary work, but this one doesn't. If if that is what I heard you say, is that because the tributary work that was a high priority has already been done or has been decided that it's not going to be a priority to do tributary work? The, the tributary work in the 07 plan was the there was tributary work as part of the 07 plan a lot of the tributary the priority tributaries are now being dealt with by the upper clark fork aquatic and terrestrial restoration plans so that is one reason that we do feel that um, the the tributary work in in this with these funds is not necessary because we have allocated funding to all the prior one and two tributaries within the upper basin uh, 
with the Aquatic and Terrestrial Restoration Fund. Could we get the citation, the, the website for that other, those other plans into the chat box here? Yes, we can. I'm not sure what chat box you're talking about because I know Bo did something, but I'm, I'll have to. But yes, we can get your links to that document, Vicki, as well. Thanks. Uh, are there any other questions uh, concerning the the plan that uh, Tom presented and we've been discussing? Let's see. Doug, John has his hand raised again. Okay, go ahead, John. Yeah, Doug, John Sesso, uh, for the record. Uh, what what I guess my plan uh, my question is uh, what's what's next we have the comment period um, and is there a um, is there a formal acceptance of this um, alternative number three that you have to go through uh, to then formally accept the plan w what my question is leading to is what what's next then in, in the implementation once the plan is set you know presumably by the end of the year and and then uh will then you be prioritizing uh you know looking at the plan and reading the plan you got you know a series of of you know implementable um I, actions uh which ones come first how, how do you are they in the order of priority that you will pursue them? Looks like alternative three might cost more than there's money to fund. If, if this is a premature question and not relevant to this meeting tonight, great. I, I, I'm just curious what's next. Uh, no, John, that, that, is a, that is a good question. And so what's next is with the public comment, we will uh, develop a response to comments it, this plan goes directly to the governor for his consideration and approval, and we do hope to get that. Uh, our communications with the governor's office is that we will get that to him um, in mid-November or, or late November and, and have him so he has plenty of time to look at that and, and approve this. Um, what we plan to do with this document is to sit down with DEQ after the first of the year. Um, as Tom indicated in his presentation, we are currently uh, working with DEQ to collect additional information about the site, as well as do some modeling of the river. And we are going to use that information to actually help plan to work with DEQ as they move forward with the other phases of the cleanup. Um, one of the thoughts is that we should be, so the initial uh, cleanup process uh, started in 2012 with phase one and progressed to phase uh, two, then five and six, or five and six and then two, then they jumped down to the Grand Corps Ranch uh, to do that. One of the thoughts is, is that to best spend this money, we need to look at the project as a whole and develop a, a strategy where we're actually addressing the highest risk areas first. We know we're not going to be able to remove all of the contamination from the Clark Fork River. So if we can look at those highest risk areas, focus there, and then um, move forward um, in, in future years to other areas um, that are of less risk. So. We, there is not a definite strategy or a timeline laid out for how we're going to do this. Um, we do plan to, as I said, meet with DEQ and come up with that strategy. And then um, I, it is my intention that we have more public meetings to discuss the strategy as we move forward to, to keep the public informed about how 
um, the state is moving forward with this project to to clean up the Clark Fork. Great. So so there'll be there'll be more to come on on uh, what goes what happens first, what happens second, what what might be done in sync with the remedy. Uh, those will those those will come in the new year, huh? Yes, they will. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Doug Casey has his hand raised. Casey. Hey, Doug Casey Hackthorne again. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for um, for take getting for considering more public outreach as part of the process. I feel like uh, public engagement on the main stem restorations kind of. Um, follow the wayside in the last few years and that we would uh, really appreciate that opportunity. So thanks. No problem. Alex has their hand raised. Alex. Doug, this will be real quick. Um, really happy to hear you talking about addressing some of those high risk, high hazard areas first. Kind of on that same note and following up with what uh, John said, do you see then maybe like in a good in a perfect scenario that you would you know implement some of these actions or include some of these actions in designs after phase three? Is that kind of the, the hope? Um, just just again, quick, not not a not a not looking for anything too in depth. Thank you again, Alex. I would uh, stay. I would say stay tuned. Um, you know, we as I said, we're gonna sit down and, and work through some things and, and look at a strategy of, of how to address the rest of the the river um don't really know um what that strategy you know it, it may it may come out that um maybe we'll you know we went out this spring and um or you know, this summer and, and Bo and and you guys worked on, on doing the bmps to help decrease some of the erosion of, of tailing straight into the river during thunderstorm events. There may be other um, activities such as that that you know we we implement. Um, but right now I don't I can't uh, uh, predict exactly what we're going to do. but as I said earlier, we will we will stay in touch and and let you guys know what we're going to be uh, planning. This is Bo. I just want to add because it gets at um, Mr. Sesso's and um, Alex's um, questions and comments is because we have an existing plan that was developed in 2007. Um, we we have a mechanism to, to be working with DEQ now. Um, Grant Coors was a unique situation because the, the feds were able to lead their own sort of restoration um components on on that federal ground but in phase one and two and five and six nrdp and deq work together um and and that's currently the case on phase three as well so there's a continuity of of, of working together and and as we move forward under this new plan it just expands our toolbox uh to allow for us to do the best possible uh, remediation and restoration with the with the available money. So I just want folks to to know that we are still working with DEQ, currently working with DEQ, and will be in the future, and and that there's continuity across these these uh, this revision um, from 2007 to 2020. So thank you, Bill. Does anybody else have any other other questions? Doug, I don't see any. OK, all right. With that, um, I do appreciate everybody's time this evening, and I would also encourage uh, everybody to uh, submit comments if you if you do have comments uh, contact us if you have questions about how to submit comments or um, if you want to discuss a comment that you want to submit we'd be happy to to talk with you about that 
And also to let everybody know, we will uh, make the documents that uh, you requested uh, available um, either uh, specifically or or uh, all on all on our website, and we'll let everybody know. So, but once again, uh, thanks everybody for joining us, and uh, we look forward to your comments on October thirtieth. Thank you.